And welcome back to Late Night Lately, the Late Late Night Show show. I'm your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is the Late Night Podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. Wow, this went off without a hitch. For the first time in weeks, in episodes, I guess, this episode went on without a hitch. Here we are, episode 33. I have to, uh, ever since I edited all those back episodes, back edited all those episodes that are on the video ones that are on YouTube right now, on youtube.com slash sequels comedy, uh, I realized that I say the episode number, and I never, I never said it for any reason before, for, a, for each of the podcasts, for Late Night Lately, the Constitutionals, which is the Entertainment Business News Podcast, and LinkedIn Logs, which is the Jobs Podcast, I never really said the numbers for anything else other than to say this is a new episode and it's starting now. However, saying the episodes in the video has really helped out because either the video's wrong or the, the title, the, the current episode title number is wrong. So one of those is going to be wrong when I'm editing. And I'm always glad I say the right thing or the wrong thing. I was glad I say something. Because it helps me out. If you edit videos, you'll know. Back at it again. Here we are. Don't come over here, buddy. You've already pissed me off enough. Okay, we're petting. I just got, I've just finished making, uh, if you see flour on my hands, pizza dough. Because I meant to do it this morning. And quite frankly, I forgot until 3.30. And I have something to do at 7.30. <laughs> and the dough needs to rest for three hours. And it is 414 and just put it inside. You might see the Breville going on back there. I, I put it inside the uh, proof mode. We'll see if that gets done. We'll see if it's, pr- it'll be proofed in two hours. Also, the Breville only goes up to two. Anyway, this is, this is not the constitutionals. I can't talk about anything I want to talk about. I right, talk about late night. Here we are. Um, this is, you know, I've, I don't think I've ever recorded an episode of this show uh, during, or post of a traumatic event that has happened where the hosts feel the need to say something and it's uh it's it's i i'll you know i I guess i'll just say it's it's probably one of my least favorite parts of late night when they forego a monologue or they they do it they they do a cold open um, forego a monologue in the in the case of the first episode of Late Night with Seth Meyers this week, or they do a cold open in the case of Stephen Colbert's show this week, um, where where they just they they take two or three minutes to say to like condemn the actions of whatever just happened, or to say oh this hurricane, this oh we're saddened by the the deaths of two hundred people in the hurricane in you know Spokane, Washington, it's. And it, I and and look, I I understand they're kind of the the mouthpiece for the people, and there's in these late night shows, uh, though they although they make um, I just touched the guitar, so have you heard <laughs> the twang of of a guitar string? It was the electric one, if you're wondering. Uh, and I do have an acoustic one, I have a ukulele, and I have a piano. Anyway, <laughs> and that's all the instruments I have that I have never played. <laughs> it, it, and they, they're supposed to be the mouthpieces for the people, and they're supposed to bring people together. And although they they make these jokes about you know left and right and center and you know out there whatever, it is they're often the case supposed to you know unify and unity and everything. And but I feel when these when these shows slow down the comedy, and I'm not, I'm not saying that they can't be more than just comedy because oftentimes I love it. When Colbert has, um, uh, when he started out, he had people like Ted Cruz on. He had the the owner of Bumble. He had all these business people and these politi- politicians, <laughs> politicians. That was not meant to be a joke. He had all these politicians on, along with the funny people and the entertainers, um, and that and that and that works because he's able to talk to those people. And same thing with Seth Meyers, and uh, and in some cases, The Daily Show. <laughs> some cases. However, it just, I'm not, I'm not going to say disingenuous, it doesn't feel disingenuous, it doesn't seem disingenuous, but it it doesn't seem like it fits. And there's a point, 
a couple of years ago during all of those mass shootings, during like the the tons of mass shootings that were happening and often televised, that a host the the host would come out you know every every couple of weeks, every couple of months it felt like, uh, uh, every couple of episodes it felt like. We condemn the actions of, you know, blank, blank, and blank. Or or we condemn the actions of the, the capital writers or whatever, what have you. And it just never seems like it fits. And I know that's a very dark thing to say and 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 it, it doesn't it doesn't fit in with to me, if I feel like it doesn't fit in with the nature of late night. Now that being said, when SNL came back Post 9-11, there was this unifying thing where I, I, I if you watch the, the cold open, I believe, I remember the monologue, but we watched the cold open of that episode. It was like Rudy Giuliani and uh, an, an SNL producer slash creator, Lauren Michaels, on stage with like the cast and firefighters and medics and, and police officers. And, uh, and then they gave, you know, this, this, I don't know what to say speech, but they gave like this talk, speech, speech, they gave this speech. And uh, which is a one sided talk. And <laughs> and at the end, I believe Lauren looked like looked around and said, can we be funny now? Is it OK to be funny now? Something along those lines. And then the theme song started or whatever like that. Something like that. But now, <laughs> I mean, but that was then. And now it's just, you know, there's so much happening. And yes, there was an assassination attempt, but uh, he's fine, you know, and, uh, uh, and, and those people are using that as fuel Metallica give me fuel give me fire give me that what you want to desire <laughs> and they're using that so I mean I wh- what does and this is not this is not you, this is not me going after Seth or Colbert or Jon Stewart but what or anybody else who talks about it who talked about it on a comedy show but but what does that what is that bringing to late night? You're not CBS morning. You're not, you're not, you're not uh today show. You're not CNN. Although there are people that only get their news from last week tonight or the daily show, which is insane to me. That is the stupid. That is the quite frankly, the dumbest thing. Even Trump gets his news from Fox News. And that's a more, I would say that's a more reputable news source than some late night comedy show. I said it. So although it's a lot less funny. All right. What else, what else happened this week? Anthony Anderson hosted uh, uh, Kimmel. And he, he mentioned he mentioned the assassination attempt. And it was uh, uh, kind of in passing. Um, but... You know, still doesn't really need to. Uh, and he kind of, and I, I'll say this. I was so off of late night this week. And I don't, I cannot tell you why. But uh, I only saw a couple of, I, I have to go back. I don't have to, but I'll, I'll, I might go back and watch a couple of uh, uh, Anthony Anderson's because I only saw his, uh, his top of the week. Uh, I'll, I'll, or I saw either Monday and I saw Monday and Tuesday, I think. But I'll I'll probably have to go back and watch his monologues, and then the Daily Show was off Monday because they already had, as John explains in his monologue on Tuesday, they already had everybody there. I don't understand why they didn't put on a show. I I I know why they I know. So here's 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 two issues I have with the statement that Comedy Central put out for the reason why they they didn't put on a show. They said uh, for the safety of our our, our cast and crew, or and, and we're not going to do a, a live show from uh, uh, the RNC, the the Republican National Convention. The thing is, Stewart came out on Tuesday and was like, uh, the security was so heightened that the the venue that they were going to do it at had to be they they had to do it at a different venue, which was further away from the convention so it made no sense and you could they couldn't get um audience members and all that stuff they couldn't get everything ready in time that's that's the reason that don't say for the safety of our staff and crew because one one person john hinckley jr didn't you know do try to do his thing and then several people followed it was one it was one guy and then you know the Secret Service, security, everybody else just kind of 
buttoned up and put on more security. It, it didn't make sense. I th- I still think they could have done a show. Uh, I did watch Colbert's live live episode after, and uh, it was it was really good. He had um, uh, 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 basically a double monologue on Monday, which was good to see. I liked it. Good, a good little long monologue. Uh, I also want to know the audience. You know, was they had to? Did they sit there and watch the RNC? <laughs> what do you do during the four hours? I assume they're brought in at eight o'clock because the show is on at eleven fifteen, eleven thirty, something like that. Eleven forty-five. It might be eleven forty-five because after midnight it starts at like twelve fifteen because it's after midnight. Speaking of Colbert, he had uh, my favorite, Elizabeth Warren, on. He had Representative Adam Kinzinger. For some reason, he had um, Charlemagne the God. Was he live for three days straight? Oh, my goodness. That I did not know. I must have missed that. Uh, He also had Bernie Sanders on. Tonight's show was uh, uh, very light this week. <laughs> Anthony Ramos, Tracy Morgan. Uh, there was stand-up on the Tonight Show, which I really appreciated. Uh, a lot of the, and also, this is this is very annoying. A lot of my recordings on YouTube TV were preempted by the show, that the ones that are on broadcast, uh, were preempted by the show before them, if they had a show before them. So... One of my late, a couple of my late night with Seth Meyers is were had like twenty minutes of um, uh, the Tonight Show with it, which sucks. I'm so mad, which means that twenty minutes of my Tonight Show was cut off. <laughs> and yeah, and yeah, I don't watch all the episodes all the way through, but still. And then after midnight, had uh, just went went along this week. Quite frankly. <laughs> Like, it's truly, it's so funny to me to like that After Midnight exists on broadcast and that they can have a whole episode with Cal Mitchell and Lori Beth Denberg and uh, 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 Danny Tamborelli, who I've interviewed before in writing. It was over email. Uh, but they can have, they can have like an episode like that. And then there's, you know, just basically political news happening on the other shows or political comedy. Okay, so let's get on with these late night Emmy nominations. I didn't think I was going to talk that long about whatever it is I just talked about. This comes from Deadline, late night Emmy noms, SNL and The Daily Show lead the pack, written by Peter White. One thing I want to stress is that this is, all right, so this is the second Emmys we we will technically be having in 2024 because the strikes that happened uh, late last year, early this year, pushed, pushed the show to early this year great because i had already forgotten it's i don't care i just like truly i didn't i didn't register like that the emmys had already happened this year i or the last year's emmys had happened this year no i just went i'm, I'm like great we're doing emmys again let's do it because i love i love uh, i love the emmys i love the oscars uh i'm lukewarm on the tonys uh the grammys i'm fine on like it's, it's just i let's i'll say this I'm fine on the Grammys. I only want to watch the music. I like the Tonys more than I like the Grammys, and I did not watch the Tonys this year. <laughs> I, I don't know why. Uh, anyway, the late night the late night Emmys have uh, had a bit of a restructuring uh, within the last year. We all know that they had to change some shows to variety and other shows. Where and by some I mean um, uh, John Oliver's show, and now we've got. Well, there were supposed to be some disruptions this year. Uh, John Mulaney presents Everybody's in L.A. Was Mulaney says he only he's only going to do that show once, and that was for the um, uh, what's it called? The Netflix is jokes <laughs> festival. Netflix is jokes. The Netflix is jokes festival, and that was, and that was, and he said I was only gonna do it once. But it was such a good and odd and funny show that I wouldn't be surprised if they if they brought it back next year. Um, however, it didn't it didn't get 
a nod at all. I think it was really like just for the blast of shows that they did, the the five or six they did. I think that show was really really good and really really funny. And even though it was broken, uh, Melania was like, "This is the best I could do," <laughs> which is really funny. Saturday Night Live scored 17 nominations, uh, Peter White writes, which is nearly double the nine that it received last year. Uh, in addition to Outstanding Scripted Series, where it will go head-to-head with Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, SNL was helped by a trio of guest stars, including Ryan Gosling and Maya Rudolph and Kristen Wiig. Uh, the Maya Rudolph one was the Mother's Day one. I don't know if that's the one I would have... Uh, chosen anyway Bowen Yang was also nominated for outstanding supporting actor in a comedy series and it received one short form nomination for behind the sketch no behind the sketch does not deserve to win that not that Emmy because uh, Seth Meyers deserves a win for corrections here it is SNL will now face John Oliver after unusual nomination process for the outstanding scripted variety series category. These two shows were, quote, screened by the appropriate peer group for nomination, which is thought to have included voters from a number of genres, and both received more than 70% of votes from this group during the voting, which took place between June 28th and uh, July 8th. It will now proceed in the same way as the other categories. So it's going to go against... John Oliver show. Yeah. The Daily Show tied its own 2022 record of seven nominations, including the Outstanding Talk series, where it won with former Trevor Noah last year, former host Trevor Noah last year, and writing and directing nods. Now, here's the thing I will say about uh, the Daily Show being nominated this year. I'm I'm guessing that Academy voters, which includes actors and writers and uh, television Academy voters, actors and writers and directors and producers and, and what have you. Uh, I'm guessing those people are thinking, let's nominate the show for John, what John Stewart's doing now. But he didn't rejoin until a couple of months ago, and so that's like that's the part they're only thinking about. They're not thinking about the stuff that happened before. Anyway, Jordan Klepper and Desi Lydic. That's my theory. Jordan Klepper and Desi Lydic were also nominated for their work. Lydic's Fox Plains were nominated for outstanding performer and a short form comedy or drama series. While Jordan Klepper's fingers on the pulse, the Moscow tools landed a technical nomination. Yeah, that was a that was a good special. After the cut was also nominated in the outstanding short form nonfiction or reality series ca- category, uh, competing with SNL behind the sketch, The Crown, Hacks, and Shogun. I'm going to tell you right now, After the Cut is much better than all of those. Behind the sketch for SNL, I like watching those videos. What it is is uh, behind the sketch. Uh, is is a series on on YouTube on the SNL YouTube where they upload a two minute video uh, w- that is that shows time lapse photography with SNL music playing over it. So Lenny Lenny Pickett and his band playing music over it uh, uh, shows them setting up and and taking down sets or it's a uh, uh, you know, uh, well, as well. So, like, they'll seven, and then they'll also be like, the writers will be like, "Oh, I wrote this," or the the act, the not not the writers, the actors, because God forbid the writers get <laughs> get anything, get any type of accolades. The actors will be like, "Oh, yeah, this is a fun sketch to do. We did it all in two days, and uh, we wrote it with so and so and so and so, and then we chopped it, and then it's two minutes, and that's it." Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why Hacks is in there. I don't know why Shogun or The Crown are in there. Maybe they have behind-the-scenes videos, but I could care less about one of those shows, and it's Hacks because I do not like that show. Take <laughs> Talking of short form, Seth Meyers' is Corrections. If you don't know what Corrections is, you're missing out. Watch it. Just go type in Late Night Corrections, Seth Meyers on YouTube, and watch from the beginning <laughs> and watch all, all the videos accompanying it. <laughs> it's like 100 or some odd videos. Plus the closer looks, plus the monologues, plus the, oh my God, the jokes Seth can't tell, all that stuff. Watch all that stuff. Just watch Late Night with Seth Meyers. It returned to the outstanding short form comedy, drama, or variety series category after missing out last year, mostly thanks to uh, things like James Corden's Carpool Karaoke, which is up again this year. Uh, but thankfully, I think you should leave with Tim Robinson won last year. Along with them, it includes uh, in that category with corrections, carpool karaoke, and I think you should leave. 
are the, the Eric Andre show, Real Time with Bill Maher, Overtime, and Only Murders in the Building, One Killer Question. What is that? I don't know what that is. One Killer Question? I watched that show and I don't know what that is. Is that like um, some type of after show? I, I'm Okay, it's an after show. In addition to Outstanding Talk Series, Myers is up for the Outstanding Music Direction, which is weird, which is very funny. Because the HE band is no longer going to be a part of Late Night with Seth Meyers when it comes back this fall. They're not going to have any more music. I mean, the band's going to be... I, if you listen to the episode I did uh, like two or three weeks ago, two or three episodes ago at this point. what the, the short of it is, budget cuts and they have to get rid of something. The band will still be a part of the show, but they'll be making pre-recorded music. Last week tonight secured six nominations including a number of technical and picture editing nods up from four last year, uh, which is, I would say, four too many. <laughs> the Late Show with Stephen Colbert is also up one extra nomination from last year, taking it to five in the in addition to the main talk show nom. It is also secured a directing nomination where it will compete against Jimmy Kimmel Live, which is getting two nominations, The Daily Show and SNL. The outstanding writing for a variety series will be competed for by The Daily Show, last week tonight with John Oliver and SNL, with Late Night with Seth Meyers missing out as it went from five nominations to four. Oliver's team has won eight years in a row. I think this year, uh, and this is not me, being a little snobbish about it. I think the Daily Show, the Daily Show, yeah, the Daily Show, that's what it's called. The Daily Show should win. I think it's because I call it Daily Show all the time. The Daily Show should win for uh, outstanding writing. I, it's, it's just like, you know, with, and I know I just, I just, uh, uh, I know I just said something about Jon Stewart coming back and people only taking into, into account. That's why they're voting for that for outstanding talk show um, for the past couple of months. But I think, that that show has been firing on all cylinders, to use that over overused phrase, uh, for the for the past you know s- seven years, <laughs> for a very long time. Is you know up up until Trevor Noah is leaving, and then even after that, it's been really really good. I think last week tonight is a little right. Yes, I still watch it. And SNL writing, I I just as much as we hear about you know Andy Samberg just appeared on Kevin Hart's. Uh, chat show on Peacock talking about how hard it was working on SNL and how he hated the seven years he was or like the last couple years because he just never got any sleep and he hated blah 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 Uh, I know people say that stuff all the time but man I think the writing in SNL is still so good even when it's a bad show and if I can find if I can I hate saying bad even if it's a show that's not very good (laughs) an episode that's not very uh, funny there's always at least one sketch where I can go, oh, that's pretty fun. You know, oh, I can find something fun there. When it's a, when it's a not a good show all around, yeah, I go, yeah, I think, oh, what's, what was in the water that week? So those are the Emmy nominations. I, I really, really hope that Seth can bring home something, it's mostly for corrections. That's what I would love. And it's uh, interesting to see Bill Maher still being nominated for things. But there you go. Listen, if you like what you heard here, head to the website, cpluscomedy.com, where I've got so many things. I've, we've Some stuff is happening. I know I haven't had any interviews in a long time, but some stuff is happening. So keep that in mind. Any hoosers, uh, what else is going on? If you like the, if you want to see a video version of the show, as well as the other shows, uh, the Constitutionals podcast, which is the entertainment business news podcast, and LinkedIn Logs, which is the uh, jobs podcast, you can find, you, you can, that is the wrong, I'm so sorry, that's embarrassing. I clicked on the wrong one. Then you can uh, watch video versions of those shows on youtube.com slash C Comedy. And you can subscribe to those shows wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow us on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at C Comedy. Follow me on those platforms at Chad Black White. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next time. Bye.